Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of Atomic OSR. I'm Cosmo, and this channel is about pen and paper role-playing games, designing encounters and cool adventures, and then combining them with miniature and tabletop terrain projects. I've been playing and running pen and paper RPGs for a number of years now. Um, I already do a podcast with my friend Dane, I'll put a link in the description of that, of uh, a lot of like game master tips and tricks, encounter design, philosophy, um, hot takes, that sort of thing. Uh, but I've recently fallen into the bottomless pit of miniatures and terrain projects, hobby, tabletop hobby stuff. Uh, and I wanted to uh, start making some videos about that. I absolutely love the added immersion you get from painted minis and tabletop terrain in your role-playing games. But even if you don't play with minis, even if you do, you know, theater of the mind, or maybe you just, you know, you don't like them, uh, I think you might still find some cool stuff here, some stuff to inspire you if you stick around. So, what are we doing today? Well, for my first video, I thought we'd go big and uh, build a multi-part miniature project that I've been thinking about for a long time. I call it the Reaver Mage, and uh, you can look at the concept art right here that I put together. Basically, as you can see, it's a evil wizard boss character of some sort. They're gonna be riding on some sort of giant or like mutant ogre with some sort of like platform. Uh, that was the idea that I had. And then they're gonna have a group of minions around them. And I thought, you know, that would make a cool encounter. It'd be hard to get past them. That would add some, you know, dynamic positioning and movement challenges to it. And I also thought that it'd be cool if they were all kind of chained together. And, you know, see what, uh, see what that looks like when I put it all together. By the way, the artwork that I used for this concept is by Adrian Smith. He is a... Uh, Really, really cool illustrator. He does a lot of really great, like, grimdark um, fantasy artwork. Uh, and he's done all the, like, illustrations and concept art for the board game Hate, which is a very cool, excellent source of really badass miniatures. Um, I'll put a link to his art station in the description down below, so you can check that out as well. But, for now, let's get started with the Reaver May. First, I wanted to start with some Games Workshop Beastmen. Uh, I've always liked these models, and I thought it would be a good beginning for the minions. So, you know, get a few of them out, get started. Ignore the uh, green stuff, we'll talk more about that later. Next, I started with some Frostgrave Cultists. I really love these models, they're very customizable, um, and I thought it would make a good sort of eclectic mix of minions, as you can see here. I really, you yeah, know, like it. You can also see some of these guys are, well, one is already customized with green stuff, and some of them are deliberately incomplete. Now, I didn't film that first tentacle of green stuff. That was a uh, oversight on my part, but when I get into this customization here, you're going to see some more. So I started with some more green stuff. I wanted to give all of them a, you know, pretty significant amount of variety, additional variety besides just the, you know, bits. I wanted to give them tentacles and, uh, you know, mutations that made them look like they came from, you know, the chaos wastes or something. If you're familiar with... Uh, Warhammer Fantasy, or something like the Area X trilogy, or the uh, you know the movie adaptation Annihilation, some characters who came from you know a spooky place of dark magic. You can see this one here. I did nothing. I just cut out the torso. That's because I'm about to go nuts with tentacles and mutation customization on this. So you know, roll up some green stuff. Uh, you can see from, you know, watching me do this here, I'm not using enough water. I'm pretty new to green stuff, but I thought, you know, I thought I could handle just rolling out some fairly simple sausages, getting them all prepped, and then uh, attaching them to the character model. 
I stole this cool little dental tool from my dentist. I'm kidding. I didn't steal it. They gave it to me. They were like, here, you want one of these? And I was like, yeah, I don't use it on my teeth, but I use it for sculpting and uh, miniatures. You know, rummaging through my bit box to get some extra pieces for this guy. I uh, found this old sword and I think it came, what did it come from? I think it came from a Dungeons and Dragons, uh, some sort of fighter mini. I thought it was a, you know, kind of a silly looking jagged sword. But if I cut it up like this, make it into a claw, that's a pretty interesting mutation to add. And I think, um, you know, I think it plays really well. So, you know, just continue to do this, keep my tools wet, work with the green stuff, let it harden a little bit, and then continue to sculpt it, position it, sculpt it, and position it. Sometimes, uh, I think you'll see later, you need to prop it up. You know, once you have it built, once you have it looking the way you want, it needs to, you know, be placed in such a way that it sits comfortably. Uh, this guy was pretty cool. I like the, as I said, I like the variety of heads and stuff that you get from a Frostgrave um, set. The soldiers, the knights, the wizards, and these cultist models. Um, and I went with one who's wearing a sort of, like, skull mask, but it also exposed a lot of his, like, head and face, more so than a lot of the other ones. So I wanted to make it, like, some, you know... Uh, some tentacles, some nasty sprouting growths are, you know, coming out from his, like, neck and face. So I rolled out a few more, got those in there. And, well, I like how it looks. I think, um, I think they're all coming together pretty well. This whole process uh, was a lot of fun because of the creative freedom. I tried to make each one of these guys unique and, you know... Distinct from one another, but also, you know, of a piece. You can tell they're all from the same warband, but, you know, neither of them, none none of all of them have the same, ugh, that's a stupid, stupid way to say that, but, you know, none of them have the same weapons, none of them have the same loadout, same gear, but you can clearly tell they are all from the same warband, they all go together. Um, this one inspired by that last one i you know i thought cool to have extra tentacles like sprouting out of the guy's throat and head um you know like his whole body is changing from the inside and so with this one i wanted to push that all the way so you know this guy has no head and one of his arms one of his arms is already a you know monstrous claw tendril thing um but I was like, well, what if he didn't have a head? What if his whole body is just this, like, mass of writhing tentacles? And, you know, it still fits with the other ones because it's still built on, you know, the template of a Frostgrave cultist, uh, you know, torso. But, you know, I just didn't put a head on. Didn't put one of the arms on. Straighten that up. Kept coming back to this after I let it dry. A little bit more because you know the green stuff will settle but anyway here you can see you know this is the guy I did the least amount of customization on but it's because I wanted a test subject for the chains you remember from the concept art I had all these guys you know chained together so I started with some jewelry chain from Michaels glued that on the back and kind of just you know wrapped it on and, you know, once that was done, had a pretty, you know, simple looking conversion, but that's kind of the main thing that makes them who they are. They're prisoners of the Reaver Mage. They're, you know, cultists. They're enthralled to her. They have to do what she says. I applied the same, you know, I uh, applied the same chain work to all of them, got them set out, and then uh, made a very small addition after I got that all looking the way that I wanted it they needed a little hook in the back so I just made that out of a bit of wire but they all have a little hook in the back so that when I finished this project I could um, 
chain them together with loose chain. And you know, we'll see at the end how well that works. But next I had to move on to the giant. So I went to the hobby store, got some stuff. Um, and what I found was a, I think it's a Pathfinder Fire Giant model. And it was pretty cool. Thought it would work really well. Main thing is it has this hunched forward head and a, you know a bulky back and shoulders, which would be great for putting the platform on top. But first, I needed to get rid of this hammer because I thought it was a little too Norse mythology. -y. I needed this guy to be you know less of like a fire god and more of like a mutant monster. So I put some spikes and chains. I put some like swords and just shaved bits. So it looks like he's got a punchy spike fist. Got some popsicle sticks ready and you know started prepping this idea for the platform. I wanted it to be simple. Um, I wanted it to be sturdy, hold together, but I also didn't want it to be too irreversibly integrated into the giant model. That was part of why I did the chains the way I did and did a little hook instead of, you know, gluing together solid like pieces. I want this whole thing when it's done to be still modular. I want to be able to take all of it apart and use individual models separately if I feel like it. But um, pretty simple little process, just gluing some popsicle sticks and uh, barbecue skewers together to make a platform after I'd measured out the correct uh, size for the uprights and for the platform so that a guy can sit on it. Then I tested it out, got it working the way I wanted, made sure that uh, you know the whole thing sat level. Then I needed to add some chains to this giant, which, you know, I did the same as the other one, added some little hooks so that the chains will, you know, come off of the guy in the center. You can see my little test version of this here. And uh, yeah, really like how it looks. As I said, you know, we'll see at the end how this all comes together. The chains work pretty well, but now it's time to work on the Reaver Mage. I got this uh, elf sorcerer model from the same reaper line, and I just made a small adjustment, put some skulls on her staff so she looks evil instead of, you know, regular. Um, going to make her look more evil by matching the paint scheme with everything else. Here you can see everything ready to go with uh, everything set to prime. I just did a simple rattle can primer of black on the plastic and wood, and then a Zenithal highlight from above with another rattle can of a off-white color. Now, when it comes to painting, I uh, I really enjoy it, but I'm I would I would call myself a talented amateur. I don't do anything special. Uh, basically, I start with a you know I usually start with a darker color. I thin down just uh, Vallejo and Omni Painter you know, regular acrylic paints. And I get the, uh, you know, I get the lower sections. I get the underclothing and, uh, you know, the inside parts of the robes with a darker color. Uh, with the Beastmen models, who are, you know, slightly different from the cultists, I started with the fur. I gave their fur a, um, that same kind of like dark brown. There's a little bit of purple in there too, uh, because I ended up using purple for the upper um, for the higher levels, as you can see here. Um, most of the cloth I did with this sort of uh, muted, um, muted dark purple color, which I really like, with the, um, with the dark shadows and, you know, especially with like the scary cultist masks. I think this does a really good job of conveying, you know, that these are like evil bad guy characters. Um, they're coming to, uh, you know, they're coming to do bad stuff, and the party of heroes obviously is going to want to stop them, want to chop them up. Um, I did these all in a sort of batch paint style. I did the undercoat of the dark brown first, and then I went and did all the same, 
all the same color for all the robes and cloth. Not being too careful, because, uh, well, you know, I'm going to go back over um, with some other stuff. And I am not really painting for any sort of... I'm not painting for competition. I'm not painting for awards. I'm not painting to, you know, do anything besides, like, put these on Instagram, maybe, and, uh, well, make them look good for the table. And tabletop ready miniatures, you know, are not the same as, like, magazine photo shoot ready miniatures. Um, after I completed all the purple cloth, I went on to this kind of deep slightly off blue color which i really like um and i used that for all the skin and i used it for the skin for all the models because i wanted there to be some thematic consistency between them and i thought you know making it look different than regular flesh would be cool and it would reinforce the idea that these guys came from you know something weird if you're playing a you know sort of traditional dungeons and dragons maybe they come from the underdark where like you know blue gray dark skin like that is pretty common um, but, you know, also the sort of like chaos wastes, mutating dark magic area. I like that. Um, but yeah. So next, uh, I did a light brushing of that blue on all of the green stuff, tentacles and mutations that I did. I wanted that to look like skin, but I wanted it to look distinct from, you know, the rest of their skin. So I started brushing on a few different layers of that, going from a sort of washed out version of that to a darker blue, and then coming in with a little bit of green. Now, at first I started doing this very lightly, uh, as you can see, but what I noticed is that the colors that I picked were making it look almost like just raw green stuff again. So I had to change it up a little bit. I finished brushing on that uh, darker green, but then I added this bright, um, this bright kind of acidic green on top of it, which, you know, makes it made it look a little less like just raw green stuff. Um, after, especially after I blended it, as you can see here, blended it down into the darker green and the darker blue. Uh, and then I also added a um, brighter blue kind of wash to them, which uh, made them transition from this like, you know, from this bright green a transition between the blue skin and the bright green of like the tips of the tentacles gave them this interesting sort of like teal um, wash over. So, you yeah, know, ended up looking very distinct. Distinct from the skin of the rest of the models, but also, uh, you know, not too different. They obviously, like, these mutations sprouted out of these guys, but they're also mutations, so they look a little different. Um, yeah, really liked how that turned out. Now, as I said, uh, I'm not going for any sort of painting awards here. I'm not even really going for that professional looking of a paint job. I'm, I'm going for uh, tabletop ready. Because generally speaking, your players, you know, especially if they don't care too much about minis, they're not going to be that much in a fuss about it. Uh, for the wood, um, starting here, as you can see with the platform, I just did a black and brown mix with a tinge of that same purple I used earlier. I don't want the wood to appear purple, but I just want all of this to have a, you know, thematically consistent color scheme. So, you know, I brushed that on kind of lightly, kind of sloppily on purpose here because I wanted the texture of the wood to come through still. And I also wanted the, um, I also wanted the highlights from the Zenithal priming to come through as well. Uh, I kept enough of that wood brown mix to put on the handles of all the weapons and, you know, just cover up any of the remaining uh, gray, white from the prime job, basically. Um, all of the wooden, you know, spear handles, axe handles, and all of these like bits that I put on the giant's spike fist, they got the same wood treatment. Um, and then I came back with a brighter wood highlight 
to, you know, make them stand out a little bit. There were some parts were a little too dark and I wanted it to be clear that like, this is wood. This is a distinct wood color different from the dark brown of the, uh, you know, robes and clothing and the fur on the beastmen. Still wanted everything to look, you know, properly distinct. Especially on the Reaver Mage here. Uh, you know, this model is the only one who's the actual boss of this warband, and she needed to look distinct. I took that same wood highlight, and I gave a little touch-up to the uh, horns and bone bits um, on the beastmen and, you know, where there were skulls. And then I gave a little wash of it on the, uh, you know, darker brown of the platform here. Still want it to look like wood, obviously, but again, maintaining a, you know, thematic color scheme consistency between all the models so that, uh, you know, it's very clear when you look at it on the table and, you know, we'll see when I, uh, we'll see when I show the whole finished project. Obviously you want it to look like they all come from the same unit that they're, you know, those guys go together. Uh, I didn't want to go nuts with metallic paint here. Metallic is, you know, difficult to work with. And I'm, as I said, a fairly amateur painter. So what I did with all the metal and the chains and, uh, you know, with this big chain, but, uh, whenever there was stuff that was going to be metallic, I got just a, you know, shiny black and I kind of glopped that all over everything, kept it off the skin, but I wasn't really careful about, you know, where I put it. I just got it all over any of the model that was going to be metal. Um, again, making everything look the same, making it thematically consistent, getting it into all the, you know, links of the chains and stuff there, making sure that I didn't leave any bright spots from the primer. Painting metal to look good, especially when you're not using metallic paints is, you know, it's hard. Uh, I would say it's way above my skill level. But painting with just this like black is it's a pretty easy sort of cheat. Without just like dunking the metal parts in a metallic paint, you can do this black over everything, um, and then you can do a dry brush. Uh, you know, you can you can slap on a little bit of metallic, and it'll just pick up the edges and the high points, and it'll just you know it'll look like dark steel. Uh, it's a little bit of a shortcut, and it's, um, well, it ends up giving the whole thing a pretty cool look with this, you know, dark steel. Uh, you know, I mentioned before, be cool to imagine these guys as, like, Chaos Raiders in Warhammer Fantasy, you know, or maybe some Age of Sigmar. That's a fairly standard... Uh, it's a well-established thing of those kind of models, the evil chaos guys that, you know, they have cool black steel weapons and armor. So um, it's very on theme for this warband. Lastly, with these guys, these beastmen, I, uh, you know, got a little red paint in their mouths and a little bit of white on their teeth before I went back and finished, after the black paint had dried, finished doing that kind of Slapping on a little bit of metallic, hitting the edges, giving it this, you know, it's kind of a cheat. Make it look metallic without, you know, doing a very, without doing a very in-depth metallic paint job. Uh, I did that on everything, the weapons, the chains, uh, the armor, all the pieces that I thought should be metallic. And I think it uh, working pretty well. You can see here the giant starting to really come together. I gotta say I was pretty thrilled with the way this model specifically turned out and uh, made me feel very validated <laughs> in my decision to not put everything, you know, to not stick everything together permanently so that I could take these models apart and move them around. My last little touch up on the Reaver Mage because I wanted her to be distinct from the other ones, uh, you know, obviously she's the leader um just put a little bit of gold stripes on the trim of her robes and that was about it you can see here with these 
mostly finished models. The uh, the platform sits pretty square on the uh, on the giant's back, um, and the Reaver Mage fits right on top there. There's also room for more models up there in case like the player characters. If you're running this as like a D and D encounter, they get up there and mess with you. But there was one last thing after uh, you know. I finished these guys. There was one last step in the painting process I wanted to hit. The, the whole thing just looked very blue. So I got this fluorescent magenta and I wanted to just touch up the purple in all the clothing and robes and like leather straps and stuff to, you know, just set everything off a little bit. I didn't spend very much time on this. They, uh, you know, they were already mostly done, but I wanted the whole thing to just pop a little bit more, and I didn't want the blue skin where it was visible to be the only thing you focused on. I wanted there to be a sort of offsetting, contrasting uh, visual to the whole thing. With the Reaver Mage, I was a little more careful, you know, because she's the only sort of like named model in this, but mostly I just gave them a quick little a quick little schlack of this uh of this fluorescent paint to give it a bit of pop now we're almost done here i want to just show you one more time the concept art before we look at the final product so you can see what we started with and what we ended up with here's the concept saw this before and now here's the final looks pretty cool with all them there chained together um i'll take this little bit of time to kind of explain how i would run this as an encounter uh i would give the minions pretty low ac uh and i would just give them multi-attack so that you know if you got near them they could attack you twice one because i gave them a weapon in each hand and i want it to be dangerous to get close to them Next, I would give the chains some sort of DC save to pass by. Otherwise, you know, you risk getting hurt or knocked over. I would give the monster, the ogre, a big old, um, big old pool of health and a really deadly sweeping attack from his chains and his punches. Uh, and then I would give the reaver mage some sort of multi spell attack, uh, wards to protect her minions. And some other stuff to make it challenging, make it more difficult to get inside the chain ring and attack her. Maybe some, you know, push the player spells or something like that. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Uh, and I'm very excited to try it at the table. You'll notice as I mess with it a little bit here, the chains were kind of an interesting inclusion. They turn it into more of a, you know, a cool display model. And they actually kind of really limit its playability on the table. I still really like how it looks. And I'm happy that I went with it. I'm happy I followed through on that part of the design. But I might not use the chains if I were to actually play this on the tabletop. I think it would be real easy to, you know, take the chains out, omit them, and just explain to your players that there's chains between these characters and so crossing over them you have to make some sort of save and there's a penalty for failing that would solve the problem um and you know since it's kind of hard for the whole thing to move the way i think i would do it is if i was running a board you know a grid-based game every round i would just have the player characters advance along with whatever like they're defending whatever the objective is I would push that forward and, you know, make it look like the Reaver Mage is coming towards them. And there would be some sort of time, like, if the Reaver Mage gets to this and destroys it, they failed. They need to stop her before, you know, before she gets to the objective. Something like that. But anyway, that's it. This was the Reaver Mage. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, hit the like button, maybe subscribe, share this to your friends, help my 
fledgling channel grow, that'd be much appreciated. Um, and if you like this sort of content, if you like role-playing games in general or just anything to do with this hobby, check out uh, the podcast that I do, Two-Headed Game Master. There's a link in the description along with a link to Adrian Smith's art station page, which, uh, again, is where I got the concept art for this project in the beginning. And, yeah. I think that'll about do it. We'll see you next time.